Hello world, welcome to the seventh video of my digital assistant creation video series and welcome to the second video in my Python for Finance series. In this video we're going to pull all the stock symbols from Wikipedia and then save the file using a library called Pickle. Then we're going to get the 10-year stock data from each one of those and store it in a file. All credit goes to Centdex, S-E-N-T-D-E-X, and his 2017 Python for Finance series. Make sure you give his channel some love by subscribing to his channel. So using his beautiful code, it only required two modifications, which I'll show you when we look at the code. So before, without further ado, let's look at this in action. So first, we're going to save the SMP 500 tickers. Okay, then down here, down here, you'll see the printed ticker symbols for all the stocks in the SMP 500. So if you were to go to Centdex's 2017 tutorial right now and run his code exactly as it is, you'll get a what's called a line break if you know what HTML is. It's dash n. So when we go through the code, you'll see how we can get rid of that. Okay? So now that we save that data, we are going to get that data and what it's going to do is it's going to read from a file that it just saved called SMP500 ticker tickers.pickle. So when I run this, you're going to see that it's already had these stocks. It's going to say already have this one, already have this one, because I ran it this morning when it worked. And it takes quite a while, and I have fast Virginia internet connection. So, but let's just run it and see. So it says it already has all of these. Already has it, already has it. So, but if you didn't have it, it would run straight through each one and save it to a file here. And you'll see, for some reason, there's 505 items, which is weird because the S&P 500 is the largest 500 stocks. But I haven't researched why it's like that. So this one required one modification because there are stocks like Berkshire Hathaway, which has an A class and a B class. And if you were to run the 2017 Centdex video, you would see that it has a dot. And that's not how the Yahoo reader works. It uses a dash. And I'll show you what that looks like in the code when we saved it. Okay, so let's look at the code. The first one we ran was the save SMP 500 tickers. So for this one, we had to import beautiful soup pickle requests and operating system so you can see those there if this is your first time to my channel you know that this is not a tutorial series so this is his video but right here the sent decks Python for finance so first you do a response that's the Wikipedia link and it goes out there and gets that website then you create what's called a beautiful soup file. You find the table. They have a sortable table. That's how we found it. We're going to create a tickers array. And for every row in the table we just found, we're going to find the stock symbol. And so like I said, one modification you'll need to do is replace the dot for a dash for symbols like Berkshire Hathaway. And we do this by finding all the, the TR is table row, TD is table data. So if you're not familiar with HTML, then that won't make a lot of sense to you. We're looking in the zero, which in computer programming is actually the first row. Then we replace the dot with the dash. And that's how Yahoo reads the uh, dashes. They run their stock symbols with the dash. Then you have to remove that HTML break line, that's the uh, forward space N. You do that by removing the first two 
or the last two, the negative one, suggests that you take off the last two uh, symbols, or all of it but those last two, because it's on the right side of the the semicolon, or that's not a semicolon, the colon. And then we append it to this array. Then it saves it to that pickle file, to your drive that the file is currently in. And then it dumps all the tickers in there. And then it printed all the array that you saw. Okay. And then we get that data from Yahoo. So this is saying if that file doesn't exist, then you run the SMP 500 um, function that we ju I just showed you. Then with that open, you're going to read bytes from the file and you're going to load those tickers. And then you're going to put each one in a path called stock underscore DFS, which is just what the uh, sent decks called it. And I was too nervous to change it to my own. Then the start date, I use 2009, August 1st to today. This is the date time function for that. And then for each ticker in the tickers array, we're going to create its own file. It's going to be a .csv file using its name, the ticker symbol. Then it's going to use the data reader. It's going to find that ticker symbol. It's going to go to Yahoo and pull that data. And it's going to go the start and end data. And you just saw that up here. And then since you saw me, since I already have all of those downloaded, it took about 10 minutes. It just printed, hey, you already have that stock symbol, that stock symbol, and just kept on going through. All right, that's pretty much it. So again, if you're familiar with programming, then I recommend going to Sentdex's file or his YouTube channel and just going straight off that. Uh, I'm really excited that this works though, because like I said in the first video in this Python for Finance series, I've always wanted to apply machine learning and algorithmic trading. And you need data, you need a lot of data actually for that to be viable. A lot of people try and uh, it's called quants and it just doesn't work for most people. But I want to give it a try. So this is the second step towards that goal. My first step was the first video in this playlist. So before so that's this video. So right before recording this video I purchased a wireless security webcam. So in the future videos I'm hoping to import the face recognition to help me authenticate with my program. So if you're, if you've kept up with my video series, you know, when I first run my program it says, hello, who is this? And then I have to say using speech recognition, Brandon, and then it lets me do the administrative part of this. And I would like for it to just open and do face recognition. And that's how I authenticate. And then when this becomes a, online when my program goes online it'll just see my face before letting you go into the administrative function so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you enjoy this series please remember to subscribe to this channel like this video hit the notification bell so you get notifications when i upload new videos and share this with all your other computer nerd friends all right goodbye world